chlorinated chicken. Okay, let's talk about trade deals. And I myself, I'm quite glad that the disgraced former Defence Secretary Liam Fox decided to fly the US-UK trade deal again because <clears throat> it started putting back on the plate, if you will, all of the issues that we're coming up to and it's a real cultural choice that we're facing because of Brexit. Now let's, there, I mean there's chlorinated chicken, there's hormone treated beef, there's, there's GMOs and there's pesticides and there's a whole raft of issues but let's start with the chlorinated chicken which um, Liam Fox said was just a detail in the, in the whole broad package and indeed it, it's just a, um, an appetizer, a canapé, a, a, an amuse-bouche if you will but if we have a look at it as an example we can see what it means for um, the rest going forward. So with chlorinated chicken, it's, it's washing uh, with chlorinated water or whatever. At the end of the day, does that make the products less healthy when you consume them? No, probably not. But that's not the issue. The issue is why it's used. Um, and it's used as a cheap way at the end of the chicken's life of, of flushing out all the bacteria, which means that during their lives they can accumulate a greater bacterial load. And in fact, research shows that with comparing European chickens with American chickens in all that battery farming. For some bacteria, they're on similar levels, but with others, the American chickens are, are four to five times greater load. The risk there is disease outbreaks, meaning that you're using uh, low levels of antibiotics to try and keep that down, which makes the accumulation of superbugs more likely, etc., etc. So with the health and safety, it's not just about the end product, it's about the whole process and there's a lot of risk that happens within modern agriculture. But here's, here's the, the other thing which is European standards on the whole are much higher than American standards because European standards are based on the premise of prove that it's safe first before you then go and uh, pour it out to the public. Whereas the American system tends to be, yeah, do what you like and then if we find that it is not safe, at that stage we will recall it. So these are different philosophies which means that there are very different sets of quality standards in the EU and in the US. And now with this trade deal we are sort of caught between because the American agriculture have said very strongly that they want us to be taking their chlorine washed chicken and, and, and other products and there's no way that our farmers are going to be allowed to sell our products into their market unless we allow their products in and if we say no then we get no trade deal with the US and if we say yes then their cheaper products undercut our own farmers left right and centre. Now of course our farmers could change their whole working conditions to try and compete with this new threat but they might not be able to and furthermore they then can't export their products into the EU which has higher standards so they've got a no-win bind here and that will happen right across British farming so this is very very risky for them. And the reason why Donald Trump is so excited and they're saying, you know, jobs, jobs, and we can do this deal with the UK so quickly, he paired this in his tweet with saying that the EU is protectionist. So think about it this way. We, we are a, um, a wildebeest, a gazelle that has just split from the herd to go off and play with the lions. Donald Trump is thinking that the UK is in a desperate situation. It will reduce its standards just to get a trade deal. Um, and therefore will be forced to accept American standards and they can expand into our market. And then that helps start eroding European standards. You see, the thing is this, if we were in the EU, a trade deal with the US would be the collective 500 million of the EU as a market size versus the 300 million of the US. If we split away, then it's the 300 million of the US versus the 64 million of the UK and the US can absolutely dictate terms and even 
more so when we are naive on the trade deal making scene. And it has been advised by experts recently that if the UK is to go off and start making its own trade deals, it may want to try it out with a few other countries first before you go and play in the lion's den of the US. So it goes further than that as well, because this is clearly now a political choice. Trade deals are becoming political. It wasn't the case before in the UK. It has been the case for a while in the US. Donald Trump himself has said there are such things as bad deals. NAFTA, in his view, is a bad deal. Our own Theresa May has been saying no deal is better than a bad deal. So bad deals do exist. And most people that have a look at what's lined up for the UK and US would say from the UK perspective, this is going to be a bad deal. There's very little way around it. So we should prepare ourselves to reject it. And in fact, if we did want to do a trade deal with the US, if we thought that, that was really important and really critical, the best way for us to open up free trade whilst also having the clout to protect our own industries, and when it comes to food, food security is absolutely critical. If that's what we wanted to do, our very best bet would be to do it from inside the single market or preferably inside the EU.